Climate action. In a recent interview, a child said, I'm so small and the world is so large, so how can I do anything about the planet? This is not a bad summary of how many of us feel about climate change. But yes, we can organize as humans and thus trigger the necessary pivot in climate action. First, some useful facts about climate change. How urgent is it? Well, if we want to contain global warming below 2 degrees, we should keep CO2 below 450 parts per million, abbreviated for 50 ppm. The Scripps Institute at UC San Diego publishes continuous CO2 levels since the 1960s. The curve wiggles upwards, has surpassed 410 ppm and currently increases by about 5 ppm every two years. You can do the math. At the current pace, we will pass 450 ppm, the 2 degree limit, before 2040. And we will pass 430 ppm, the 1.5 degree limit, before 2030. So how bad is it? One of the most prominent tipping points, the irreversible meltdown of the Greenland ice cap, could be triggered between 1.5 and 2 degrees of global warming. The melting continuously raises the water level of the sea, ultimately by 7 meters. Manhattan and Florida will progressively drown. So will large parts of the Netherlands, Bangladesh, Shanghai and many more coastal regions. While this is drastic, it might seem decades away. However, we face many critical climate effects already in the 20s. The global increase of severe storms, wildfires and droughts is well documented. Even California and Australia are no longer coping. Also, today's forests in Central Europe, exposed to faster heat up, longer weather periods and less rain, have started to die without fires possibly irreversibly, and agriculture is severely threatened. Infrastructures and buildings in traditional permafrost regions are threatened by collapse. So why is there so little action? Climate change is a so-called wicked problem. The atmosphere is globally shared and the dramatic effects occur with a time delay. Progressively, but irreversibly, over decades. If communities could influence their own climate, we would have seen decisive action already yesterday. So what will our children and grandchildren say? Our children and grandchildren will accuse us of crimes against humanity. Fridays for Future and Extinction Rebellion movements are mild precursors still with a constructive intent. Saying we did not know will be a lie. And the behavior of others will not count as an excuse. Our children will have nowhere to hide. For today's humanity, there is no planet B. So what is the economic case for climate action? Consensus thinking says that there is a first mover disadvantage for countries and regions to tie climate action. But this is wrong. Research by the Boston Consulting Group, which started with a collaboration with the entire German industry, has shown a smart systemic decarbonization of an advanced economy such as Germany does not hurt economic development even when acting unilaterally. As a result, almost every country in the world can significantly accelerate actions today without harming growth. Also, we hardly require new technologies. Current technologies 
will take us most of the way. The tricky part is, first, the initial investment is staggering. Around $2.5 trillion in the German case and about $75 trillion globally. Second, while the net economic case is positive in many countries, within those countries there are winners and losers. More importantly, most benefits do not go to the entities that need to act, but accrue to other parts of the economy. So a mixture of incentives and regulation is required. Irrespective, in light of the positive national economic case, governments have no excuse not to act. This conclusion does not even take into account the huge avoided economic damages from global climate change, which otherwise start accruing already in the 20s. Conservative estimates put the potential global economic loss from a scenario of unchecked global warming at minus 30% of GDP within this century. However, GDP is by no means a comprehensive measure. We are squeezing out 3% global GDP growth while consuming 1.5 planets worth of resources a year. This might suggest that GDP growth is what entrepreneurs call a vanity metric, something that looks good while things are already failing. The economic upshot is simple. Many countries directly benefit from taking climate action. And even for those that would not, the costs of action pale in comparison to the costs of global inaction. So what are the most immediate priorities? We need to realize that in the 20s, we start fighting on two fronts. Desperately trying to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, while concurrently fighting to maintain our ability to act in view of the already inevitable changes. So first, we need to create an irreversible dynamic for climate action. Second, we should focus on five critical areas for mitigating climate change. And finally, we need to preserve our ability to act. So how to create an irreversible dynamics? Start by mobilizing the youth. It is their future, not just on Fridays. They can pressure their parents as children, companies as consumers, and politicians as voters. Then, mobilize financial markets to force companies to disclose their climate strategies and to explicitly price long-term risks of carbon-intensive business models. This would render climate action by companies rational. Then overcome partisanship, win the Republicans in the US, partially still trapped in doubt, and similar groups around the world, embracing climate action is a deeply conservative cause. And mobilize legal and moral institutions, such as courts and churches. Climate action is about preventing a crime against humanity. More broadly, beyond Europe, win the US, then China, then the G20, and then the world. So what are the five critical targets to focus on? First, decarbonize electricity. Exit coal, whose economic case with carbon capture is doomed, and build out renewables. Assured gas, ultimately synthetic gas from green hydrogen, and nuclear for security of supply. Electrify road transport. New cars and light trucks should go all electric within the next 10 to 15 years. While air traffic and ships will require more expensive synthetic fuels, for which industrial scaling needs to start now. Then turn around forestry, agriculture and nutrition. Stopping tropical deforestation is critical but a more fundamental movement towards a modern, both sustainable and efficient 
Cultivation of ecosystems, not monocultures, is required. Also, CO2 from burning biomass should be captured. Finally, excessive consumption of red meat should arguably face a cigarette-like social intolerance. Then, refurbished buildings. All new builds and all refurbishments need to include strong isolation and efficient carbon-free heating and increasingly cooling. While this might appear slow, acting within current construction cycles, around 2 to 4 percent of buildings per annum is critical to keep costs manageable. And finally, introduce carbon pricing. This will help with the above actions, but not by itself assure them in due time. More actions are required, both to stimulate innovation and to address additional sectors such as process industries. The build-up of the dynamics should start triggering those. Finally, how can we defend our ability to act in face of the already unavoidable climate change? First, assuring a reliable food supply is most critical. Universally, our current monocrops are threatened and we need to learn to plant and automate truly resilient ecosystems. Past droughts and resulting social and food price crisis already exacerbated migration pressure from North Africa and the Middle East. This may serve as a historic warning. Second, assuring a socially balanced distribution of costs and benefits is important. Beyond moral imperatives of fairness, we can watch how our democracies do not sustain the change if we do not manage an inclusive implementation program. And of course, we need to strengthen the resilience of our critical infrastructure, such as water and power supply, as well as housing and transport, against the effects of storms, floods, fires, heat, and more. Organizing for climate action. We are facing the largest peacetime transformation of our economies and arguably our societies. While we do not need to fundamentally change the way we live, we need to wean off fossil fuels fast. We cannot hope to devise a master plan for the world, but we can achieve the buff mobilization, implement the five most critical climate actions and focus on preserving our ability to act. The national economic logic is strong, the global one is overwhelming. In the end, this is a question of survival. For today's humanity, there is no planet B. We have reached a stage that we need all hands on deck and action cannot be postponed. And yes, we can make a difference. While the individual seems powerless, we can organize for action. Thank you for considering.